Hello and welcome back to James Parker Sculptor YouTube channel. Normally you see me here in the workshop working away and doing very little talking but today I thought it was time to take some of your questions. I started this channel only about 12 weeks ago after my brother gave me a lot of encouragement following his tremendous success on YouTube and he thought that people would like to get an insight into how I go about my work. I've been really overwhelmed and blown away by the response. Already we've got over 1400 subscribers, so I want to thank every one of you for subscribing, uh, liking my videos, commenting, and the interaction has just been absolutely tremendous. So do continue to let me know what you think of my work. So many of you have asked questions in the comments that I thought I'd take some time in which I'll endeavour to answer as many of those questions as possible. I have a comment here from Rowena. She says, I love watching you work. Your sculptures are amazing. I have the perfect place for one. What do you do with all the chippings? Well, that's a good question, Rowena, and one that many people have asked. Simple answer, but a good question. Basically, I just bag up all the chips. I put them in tonne bags, and local landscapers come, collect them, take them away, and use them in people's gardens, just as decorative aggregates for paths and things like that. So uh, it's good that nothing's going to waste. Kendra Van Berkeley says, I have a question. I see the bottom circles are one piece, but the bigger ones are pie shaped. Does this make it more stable or is it to add more variety to the outside of the piece? Great job, by the way. Hi Kendra, yes, you're absolutely right. It does make the sculpture more stable. If I were to use single slates all the way up, they would just rock on the high spots. Another reason and the most important reason um, as aesthetics. By using lots of slates, it gives it this real fabric-like appearance. The texture really draws people closer from a distance. They see the whole form from, you know, from 50, 100 yards away and, and then the texture really draws them in. So that is, that's the most important um, reason that I use smaller pieces of slate. Now a question from Vanessa. She says, um, James, where did you learn to do this? or are you self-taught? There certainly seems to be a creative gene in your family, your artwork, your mum's bakery, and Graham's videography, and he has to get creative healing some of those cows. Hi Vanessa, thanks very much for your question. You followed me right from the very start, which I really appreciate. The answer to your question is yes, I'm completely self-taught. I grew up down in Galloway in the family farm, and my father taught me the basics of dry stone walling when I was still a child. My brother and I actually made a video about that a couple of weeks ago, and I'll post that link to that video at the end of this one. It's entitled uh, Scotland's Dry Stone Walls and you can go back and check, check out what inspired me when I was growing up there. Now, from learning the basics on the farm uh, and building quite rudimentary structures like this dry stone cairn, which was actually built by my great grandfather, but not dissimilar structures, I moved on and built more and more complex structures like this dovecot, which is completely dry stone. It's a corbelled entrance and it's got a, a, a spiral staircase, as you can see. Um, from there I started dabbling in sculpture, um, I just had a go, that was the important thing. If you're interested in something, you really should have a go because it's amazing how you can have an interest and you know never pick a hammer or a slate up. So uh, that's how I got started um, and basically I, I just followed those fundamentals that my father taught me as a child. Um, so as far as the sculpture goes, I'm self-taught, but he did lay the foundations for, for, what I, for what I do now. So I hope that answers your question. Gary Beard asks a good question. He says, great video, love to watch an artist at work. Uh, well done, how thinly can slate be cut? Well, that's a good question, Gary. Uh, when I, I quite often get asked, if I'm using blue slate or uh, green slate from the Wake District, it, it tends not to be split too thinly. Um, it, it's just that it's not so finely grained. If I'm using Welsh slate, it can be split very thinly. Um, just to show you, uh, I have a piece here, which I've just looked out, I've got the old micrometer, and it's just over two millimetres thick. Um, so the finer the grain uh, in the slate, uh, the composition of the, the rock, then the thinner the slate can be split. I have a question here from Garth who says, is that the bridge in Molly and Mac? Well, uh, that's a good question, Garth. Uh, yes, good spot. It is the bridge in Molly and Mark. For those that don't know, Molly and Mark is a kids' TV program. Uh, I only know because I have young children myself. Um, and the bridge that Garth is referring to is the Fourth Rail Bridge, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was built in uh, the 1880s and took 4,500 men about eight years to complete. Um, so it's a fascinating bridge. And yeah, good question, good spot. Yes, you're absolutely right. Michelle asks, 
Do you have any of your work displayed locally in any of the surrounding towns or are these pieces for people to buy? The work is beautiful. Hi Michelle, thanks very much for your question. The answer to the first part of your question is, um, no, I don't actually have much work on display in local towns. And that brings me on to the second part of your question, which is, yes, my work is uh, for sale. Most of my work is actually owned by private individuals. And funnily enough, most of my work's actually um, outside of Scotland now. So I've got work in about 10 countries worldwide and I can arrange shipping anywhere in the world. Um, and that's quite straightforward. The more times you do it, um, the more practice you have, the easier it gets. So thanks very much for that question. Here we have a question from a lady with the YouTube handle Spooky Lady. Um, she says, another absolutely stunning piece. Where does your slate come from? Well, that's another good question. Um, most of my slate comes from here in the UK, from North Wales and the Lake District in the northwest of England. Um, I also use reclaimed slate from here in Scotland. Um, we don't have any slate quarries uh, still extracting slate and I use slate from uh, the USA and from Canada and I've actually uh, got a few pieces of slate here just to show you how much it varies in colour. Um, here's a piece of slate um, from Vermont uh, in the States and this is green slate and um, you might think on karma it doesn't look particularly green until I put it next to a piece of slate from New York. Um, Obviously this is New York red slate, um, it's really unusual, um, but it is completely natural and often when I use these colourful slates, people ask me um, what have you coloured them with, but uh, obviously they're naturally occurring slates um, and they, they vary tremendously in colour. Alex Ward says, absolutely love watching your vids, I have so many questions, but we'll ask you a couple so you don't end up blocking me. Well, we'll just take the first question, Alex. Why do you sometimes wear a mask, then don't seem to bother? Hi Alex, thanks very much for your question. I should be wearing a mask all the time in the workshop if I'm shaping slate, uh, either with a hammer or particularly with an angle grinder, it creates really fine dust. Slate contains silica, so when that gets in the air in the form of dust, I can breathe that into my lungs and it's very dangerous. Uh, years of exposure, if you're breathing that in, it'll, it'll cause silicosis. Um, yeah, you should wear a mask all the time. In the first video, um, I didn't wear a mask while I was talking to the camera and really that's a mistake. I should be wearing a mask all the time. I'm glad you uh, raised that question. Emka was sent here by my brother. She asks, have you ever found fossils? And she sends greetings from the Netherlands. Hi Emka, thanks for subscribing from the Netherlands. The answer is no, I've never found fossils in slate. I found lots of fossils in Carboniferous sandstone, things like ferns and tree rings, but never in slate. Um, the slate that I use actually comes from a similar period as Carboniferous sandstone from the Devonian period about 400 million years ago. I know from reading my uh, my four-year-old books on dinosaurs that, um, that I ought to be able to find uh, fossils of things like trilobites and ammonites in slate, but I never have actually found any. Um, I know that uh, on the east coast of England, um, Robin Hood's Bay in particular in Yorkshire, you know, it's a prolific area for finding uh, fossils from that period, but I've never actually found any in Slate, and if I do, um, I'll be sure to let you know. Stephanie Holman says, amazing, did you make the Slate Sphere water feature at Codder Castle in Nairn? Hi Stephanie, thanks very much for your question. Well, yeah, of course I've come back to Codder Castle again, it's one of my favourite places uh, to be. Um, for those of you who don't know Codder Castle, it's a castle in the Scottish Highlands, which it's like it's out of a fairy tale. It's the most incredible place, and I'm very fortunate to have quite a lot of work there. Um, and the, the sculpture that uh, Stephanie is referring to is uh, one of the first sculptures that I ever made. It was uh, back in 2008, I think, um, and we used slates from the castle. Um, the castle was undergoing a major restoration project, and um, Lady Codder commissioned me to to make a sphere in the what's now a, a slate garden. I actually redesigned the path round about the garden uh, under her supervision as well. So um, that was a real privilege, um, and still is a real privilege to have my work there. Um, so yes, that that is one of mine. I have a question here from Leslie Young. She says. You make the very difficult look easy. A couple of questions. Do you use any adhesives? And secondly, as I'm sure they take quite a long time to create, how about doing small scale sculptures so you can upload more often? 
Hi Leslie, thanks very much for your question. Uh, well, to take the second part of your question first, I would love to upload more often. It's something that I've asked myself quite often when it comes to, can I sustain this YouTube channel? Will people be interested if I can only upload every week or two weeks? But it's one of those things. My work is, just takes a certain amount of time. And as far as making smaller sculptures goes, well, of course I have to work in the sculptures that people commission and people don't tend to commission when working on a small scale. Even if they did, the smaller the sculpture, the fewer the number of layers, and the, the forms become not quite so fluid. So it's not something that I'd encourage too much. But I am flattered that you'd like me to upload more often. As far as your, the first part of your question goes, the question on everyone's lips, are my sculptures fixed together? Well, my sculptures are all built dry stone, and most of my clients ask that uh, for the sake of security and practicality uh, that they can be fixed together, uh, which I'm obviously happy to do. I can turn up at someone's house with a trail of the slate and build it completely dry, um, or I can fix them together, and then there's no requirement for me to travel around the world uh, with them as I'm shipping them around. So I would like to leave a little bit of mystery uh, as far as that question goes, and I hope you, hope you can appreciate that. A bit of a different video from me today, thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then click like and leave a comment, let me know what you think of it. If you'd like to see more of me actually building sculptures, and you've not already done so, then smash that subscribe button, and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon.